let's work on the concept of Wilcoxon rank sum test in this video. So now we also have a non-parametric test because it's the Wilcoxon test. But the difference between the Wilcoxon rank sum test and the Wilcoxon signed rank test is that we're having now two independent samples, whereas before we had matched pairs test, independent samples. Meaning that the data that we're comparing does not have anything in common in the two observations, in the two settings. When we have a matched pairs, the dependent factor is that they're both the same observations in two different settings. But when we have independent samples, it means there is no relationship between those values. And in this example, we're comparing an index for a price, I guess, for a, for a sandwich in Europe, European cities, and the rest of the world. So the world. And the way we do this test is, it, is by looking at the ranks at the sum of ranks. That's why it's called rank sum test. And how do we do it? Well, first of all, we are comparing again distributions. We are comparing the middle values, the medians. And the intuition is this. If we would have the same distribution in European prices and the world prices, in that case, we should have a similar distribution of ranks. Because in some European cities, we will have low ranks and high ranks. So let's write that down. In some European cities, we will have several low ranks and several high ranks because in some cities we will have cheap prices and high prices. And the same goes in the world. There's several places in the rest of the world where we'll have literally very low prices. So in the world, if we also have the same relationship that we have some low prices and some high prices, then we will have a mix of both kinds of values, both kinds of numbers, low and high. And on average, if these mixes are similar, if these values are similar, then the average rank in Europe and the average rank in the world of these prices have to be similar, if indeed they do not differ significantly. And that's what we are going to do. Now, similar to the signed rank test, we're not comparing exactly the rank in Europe with the rank of the rest of the world, but we are comparing, for instance, the average rank in Europe with the expected value. And the expected value is the value of the entire population that we would have if we take the prices of the sandwiches from all European cities. So under the, under the mean of the Wilcoxon value, we have the expected value of this uh, of these ranks of the ranks in Europe and now what is the mean the mean is the average so basically what we're testing is what would be the average rank sum well the average rank sum would be n which is the number of observation in Europe times the overall average rank and this will make sense when we actually give the examples but let's just first write the math to, to prove it so that would be n plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, let's solve it and we'll, we'll understand it. This is the overall average rank. So this is the rank of both Europe and the world. Now we have how many ranks? From 1, 2, 3 until, until uh, 13. So 13 is the highest. Meaning that the average rank that we would expect if we have this symmetrical distribution would be 13 plus 1 divided by 2, 14 divided by 2 is 7. So that would be our average. Now, if indeed we would have symmetrical distributions, then the sum of the ranks in Europe should be 6 observations from Europe because we have, we have how many European cities? We have uh, here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 European cities. And for every European cities, on average, we expect to have the rank of seven on average because we're testing for the average. Then the average, the expected value should be 42. So in expectation, we should have a sum of ranks equals to 42 if indeed we would have a symmetrical distribution between Europe and the rest of the world. Now, the way we're comparing is that we want to see what is the difference between our sample rank sum and the population rank sum. So we're doing it by a Z distribution. We're taking the difference 
from the sum in our sample of the Wilcoxon, will, sum of ranks, minus the expected values, minus the mean of the population, divided by the standard error of the Wilcoxon rank sum. So how do we calculate the standard error of the Wilcoxon rank sum? Well, that's equal to the square root of n1 times n2 times n plus 1 divided by 12. And that would equal to square root of n1 is the number of observations in Europe, which we just said it's equal to 6. The number of observations in the rest of the world is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Total n is 13 plus 1 is 14 divided by 12. And if we calculate it, that would equal to 7. That would equal to 7. So let's actually calculate all these things. Now, what is the sum of the ranks in the European cities? Well, these are the ranks, these are the values, so we have to add them up. 8 plus 6 is 14, 14 plus 12 is 26, 30, 43, and then uh, 52. So here we have 52. So the Z value would equal to, the Z value would equal to, 52 minus the expected value we calculated to be 42 from here so 42 divided by the standard error which is 7 10 divided by 7 is equal to 1.43 so let's plot this on our z distribution and understand what's going on on our z distribution we have a symmetrical distribution and we are looking by how many standard errors we deviate from zero because when we have a z value of zero that would mean that the numerator would be zero that would happen when the rank sum in our sample would correspond to the population mean of rank sum and in our case we have a z value of 1.43 so we want to see what's the probability that this happened by chance so we go to the z distribution and we can look at the negative 1.43 because they are symmetrical and the z distribution gives the values to the left of the number. So the probability both on this side and on this side is equal to 0 0.076 which is 7.6%. How do we interpret this, this result? Let me go to the right and, and write that down. We have a 7.6% probability that this different uh, difference occurred or happened by chance and that's pretty high it's quite likely that this difference happened by chance so that's not enough for us it's not sufficient evidence to claim that the distributions differ and that's it's not sufficient to reject the null hypothesis so we do not reject the null hypothesis meaning that the distributions do not differ significantly. The distributions do not differ significantly between Europe and the rest of the world. Hope, hope this makes sense. We are done.